perhaps my most creative period uh, has been in those years that I uh, lived in Toronto, eight or nine, or is it ten years that I was in Toronto? I brought out about eight or nine books, uh, a book a year. It has been tremendously stimulating because it meant that I was interacting with the Ontario Protestants. I had to know Protestants. I had to know commercial Toronto. It was an altogether different scene from what it was here. Here there's a kind of shtetl feeling, you know, a small village feeling. And, and I got out of that and into the larger world of Toronto. Toronto is a place where Canadians from all over the country go to because that's the place where uh, if you're ambitious and you're striving for success, the avenues are there, the thoroughfares are there for you. Toronto is a place for acquaintances of one kind or another, in business or literary, but not for friendships. If I want friendship, and I do, this is where I find it. I have my Leonard Cohn or Mordecai Richler or the young poets. I also have a slew of enemies, which I carefully cultivated before I left. I'm very proud of the ones that I've made, and they keep me alive. After all, they help to... They helped to define my literary personality. Somebody once asked me, why didn't you go down to the States? I mean, why did you stay here? After all, the reception that I got at the beginning was not exactly a warm one. And I answered that uh, only in Canada could I have defined that kind of literary personality. I would have disappeared into a place like the United States. I just would have disappeared. I would have been another, well, Norman Mailer or a Ginsburg or something like that, although you would say they haven't exactly disappeared. But from my standpoint, as an artist, um, no subject matter. And here I was given a subject matter. My interaction with the people of Canada, with the people of Montreal in particular, helped to define the kind of literary stance which I was to take. Is that what you see yourself, as a kind of burr under our collective uh, consciences? Um, well, that's how I've defined myself. I began by attacking the Puritanism and the anti-sexuality that was in this country then, and the Philistinism and the materialism. And I still go on um, attacking those things which I find are defects in our body politic. I see the poet as a prophet rather than as a burr, although it comes to perhaps the same thing. Uh, and I think it's important to make people understand the dark places of the human heart and the human soul. That I consider the prime job of the poet prophet, to make people aware of the darkness, the abysses of evil that lurk in every single one of us, and I'm not excluding myself, that it is so easy to rouse us either to savagery or indifference. And where you get a society or a civilization that lives well, that hasn't much to worry about, that hasn't perhaps encountered much pain or suffering, it is so easy, so easy, to overlook the sufferings of other people. Now, for me, that is what literature is about, poetry is all about, to awaken people's consciousness, to make them aware of the dark abysses in their own soul. That's the kind of poetry I've been writing for the past 30 or 40 years and see myself writing for the next 10, 15, as long as the Lord spares me.